So as I was saying in that last tutorial before the software again uh, interrupted me was that uh, this is how we instantiate our objects and this is this little project that I've been working on I just want to show you a little example uh, I believe it's battle one so I've just been messing around with uh, Fungus which is a plugin for Unity it's actually uh, it's available for free in the asset store it's using a uh, it's how to make like virtual novels and stuff and then or visual novels rather uh, interactive you know software that would just it, it just portrays your characters and you know a bunch of dialogue and it makes things really easy so this is just some of their assets that I'm just borrowing right now just as placeholders until I you know make my sprite sheets and everything but really what I want to show you so here I've just you know created a little character capability to jump move around and again this the actual sprite the image is funguses it's not mine but if we hit space here this explosion this is out of the unity asset store it's actually called big bang it's off one of the environmental packs that they offer and i'll show you that again so as soon as i hit the space bar you see you can see in the it is the code instantiates the prefab onto the screen it plays a little animation and then it dissipates one more time so basically the way that i did that was if we go to elementals prefabs and i want to go into fire big bang and actually what i'll do is i'll just go into demo real quick i'll open that up okay and we'll play that and they actually make it really easy see right here so that's what the prefab does it's just this explosion and you'll see it again hopefully I think we might have to change to okay there we go that's so that's the explosion so all I did was I just triggered that on a key press of key code dot space and right here the key thing when you're in when you're doing this thing with a prefab basically created a public game object right the name of our scripts here then in the update function which is called once every frame the normal game frame rate go goes between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second depending on your target platform here you have your game object, uh, I called it bullet instance. So that's just going to be the variable game object that holds this instantiation, instantiated prefab. Then we have our if statement here that relies on a key press. It gets the key code from the user's key press. And once they hit the space bar, we store the game object instantiation into the bullet instance public game, uh, game object uh, data container here. And we're instantiating... Big Bang, which is our prefab name. Once again, I'll just repeat this just for learnability. We have Big Bang, which is the prefab name. Transform.Position, which is the position we want to instantiate it at. And Quaternion.Euler with the new vector 3 of 0, 0, 0, which just means pretty much we don't want any rotation in the object when we instantiate it. So those three arguments are prefab name for instantiate, our prefab name, position, rotation. So that got into a little more scripting than I wanted to, but I figured that was a good time to uh, show that to you guys. And if I just jump back into my little project here, as you can see, I was also able to make my character jump very easily, which was done through the script, move left and right. And basically, if we want to take a look at the components that we added to her, we would just go here. We have a rigid body 2D, a move script, which controls the movement. Rigid body 2D, which actually in the game, it, it would identify the object that a rigid body is attached to as an actual mass. We have a box collider 2D, which controls where other objects with colliders on them read this object to be. So let's say we have a bullet and we want to see if it hit a player. Well, we drop a, a box collider 2D on that 2D bullet. We drop a box collider 2D on our player. And if at any time those two colliders hit into each other, the game would recognize that as a collision. And we're running short on time here, but additionally we have this gun attack script, which is for an attack that I'm planning on putting in, and also a special attack. And it's good to keep your script as organized as possible. Some people like to cram everything into one script for one character, but I feel like that really defeats the purpose of having multiple scripts and being able to reuse them. Because you might make a bunch of characters and attach, diff and attach the same script to two different characters, depending on the functionality you want it and you save yourself a lot of time programming with that and a lot of time you know copying and pasting your code over and over I just like to use one script on all of them and then if I need to I'll just you know change the name and change a, a couple of the features and that's about it for now